You ever have the situation where you have so many things you want to say all at once, but not enough time? Well, that's kind of one of these videos. Because we're talking Halo, Xbox, Game Pass, as well as Phil Spencer getting nuked in game and an extra game coming out on the 21st. So the first bit of news that we're covering today is about Halo and Sir Asia, our favorite leaky boy on Twitter said this recently saying 343 has registered two different title IDs on Xbox Live, which means that they might be working on releasing something standalone soon might be something made for mobile, would line up for Xbox plans. Now, there were no details provided from Asia about what exactly these IDs were. I'm assuming they're just kind of unique number generated ID kind of things. Don't really showcase like Halo the Endless or something happening, right? But it's continued news that 343 is currently cooking on something right now, and they have been for a few years now. Now, there have been some recent improvements made, guys, and that is on this channel because apparently the number has gone down to only 63.9% of people who watch the channel are not subscribed. If you guys want to stay up to date with everything going on with the gaming, well, you know what to do then. According to some LinkedIn profiles that were now edited, but when they were first posted, they did state this. That the art director was working on an unannounced Halo release since April of 2022, and another dev is building player system and assets in Unreal 5 at 343, which would corroborate with what we saw from Jason Schreier saying that Halo is looking to switch over to the Unreal Engine. So when Sir Asia mentioned something about like a Halo mobile game coming out, that just would not sit well at all with the community. I mean, if this was the case, this would be Microsoft's version of a Diablo Immortal release. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys like the reason why that was a big issue for Diablo is because people were longing for a major Diablo release, right? Three Diablo 3 came out like about 2012, 2013, something around then. And then this new Diablo game was announced like on well, those only mobile that was announced like close to 10 years after the release of Diablo 3 and people knew that a new Diablo game was getting announced and it being mobile, not exactly appealing to the core audience, which would be detrimental and horrific for the Halo community as well. This even caught the eye of the community from Mint Blitz over here saying, please God, not mobile Halo, like legitimately anything else. Because if you're gonna use the Halo IP, but then not deliver on the main subject that would made the Halo IP popular in the first place, would just be horribly detrimental to the entire community and Xbox brand. Now I will say, Asia did kind of clear this up a little bit, saying, pure speculation Xbox might have a deal with Apple to port stuff to the iPhone 15, like Death Stranding slash Resident Evil Village. And also mobile is just kind of coming to mind right now, mainly because of Microsoft launching its own mobile game store very soon, which makes sense as the mobile market has been an area Microsoft's really struggled to get into. And I think that was a huge part of the Activision Blizzard King, remember King part of the acquisition right there, because King are the people who may develop and own part of Candy Crush as one of the largest mobile games ever. I mean, yeah, like I said earlier, you have Diablo Immortal, it's part of Activision Blizzard King, as well as Call of Duty Warzone on mobile, which just released, and apparently it's done pretty well for itself. Though I'm curious if this mobile store will tie into Game Pass in some way. If so, that would be awesome for Game Pass Ultimate. I could just download any game on my phone. That would be pretty freaking sweet, which would fall in line with what Microsoft has been doing with their Play Anywhere model. And while we're on the topic of Game Pass, there is some inner turmoil apparently going on with Microsoft, but what games should go on Game Pass? Revealed here by The Verge talking about the recent game development. This is mainly an article reading about the closures of various studios, but goes on to talk a little bit more about Call of Duty and Game Pass, saying, Microsoft has also had internal debates to, about whether to put a release of Call of Duty into Game Pass, especially since there is a current slowdown on Game Pass subscribers and lackluster game console sales, which would kind of make sense why also they're looking possibly to increase the price of Game Pass Ultimate again, which was just upped last year. While on the topic of Game Pass and games coming to Xbox, Sarah Bond recently went on an interview with Bloomberg to talk about what's going on with Xbox recently and just kind of try to hype them up a little bit. This interview was a bit of a disaster kind of for Microsoft and Sarah Bond in particular. But there was some good information I wanted to share with you guys that she provided that kind of eased a lot of concerns with Game Pass. It's about Game Pass. We know our core users uh, love Game Pass. Uh, game Pass is a, a gaming subscription. You get um, a whole portfolio of games, but importantly, you get every single one of our games that we build day one in Game Pass. 
And the quality and the breadth of those games has only been going up over time, and you're going to see some more really big games. Uh, going into Game Pass later this year. From Activision's uh, um, portfolio? Across or? the whole slate. Across the whole slate. You're going to see some really amazing things. Um, and keeping that as something that is really special for Xbox players is central for us. Notice how she didn't turn down Activision games coming to Game Pass at all, which totally makes sense because we're already starting to see that happen. Because we have Diablo 4 that recently joined the Xbox Game Pass family back in March. I haven't had a chance to play it, but I definitely will jump in and play it and give it a go once season four rolls around. I think it'll be the right time to jump in. And we've seen all the Bethesda titles jump into Game Pass as well. So I don't see why there would be any difference why Activision Blizzard King would be treated any differently. Though for mobile, it might be a little different, but we'll just have to keep an eye on it. And hopefully they don't try to pass the buck onto the players here with another price hike for Game Pass because of Xbox's borderline reckless spending, honestly. But we'll just have to wait and see. I doubt we'll see any news about that, especially with the Xbox showcase coming right around the corner here on June 9th, which we will be doing a live stream watch party on the channel here, guys. So keep an eye out for that. Or you could just subscribe to follow the channel. You know, I'm just saying. Of course, with the recent news of Xbox and the closures of Tego Gameworks and the other studios and like Arcane and the other ones involved with that, Xbox fans have not been happy, right? It's It's been no secret. It's been a bit of a tumultuous few weeks for the Xbox brand. But uh, some fans out there decided to get revenge on Phil Spencer in particular because they nuked his camp, P3's camp, in Fallout 76, which Phil Spencer has been known to play Fallout 76. And this is very much, this is him. Like, that's him. He got nuked, which is hilarious to have happened right around this horrible news time frame. But... It seems like Phil might be planning some revenge because good old P3 just completed the challenge of Officer on Deck. This is a challenge within Xbox, the release set Fallout 76, that lets you know that like you're planning to set off a nuke. And that's how you complete this achievement. So who is Phil Spencer going to nuke? We'll just have to wait and see. I would just find that hilarious if he gets revenge on the people who nuked him. If there's a way to pull that off in Fallout 76, I mean, that would be hilarious. Of course, being the big old boss, he could probably just be like, I'm gonna nuke the entire map. Now, Tuesday, 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 May 21st, it may be Senua Saga Hellblade 2's release, but you know, a game is also releasing X to Fight on that same day, May 21st, guys. And we actually had a little bit of a roadmap recently come out about this game and it looks pretty good. This was announced on the XFI and Twitter saying on the 16th launch trailer and preload start so you can have this game up and ready to download before the game even launches, which is perfect. A deep pre for preseason episode, a battle pass trailer, which is actually kind of interesting because this battle pass is probably gonna be a very small one. So keep your expectations a little bit lower because it's technically season zero that's gonna be launching on the 21st as season one will be launching about six weeks after the official launch of the game. Then you know that's just to avoid any negative reviews about monetization with the game. I mean, we've seen this do with Call of Duty all the time. And you got so many Call of Duty devs currently working at X Defiance, specifically Mark Rubin, who was one of the lead devs over at Infinity Ward back in the day. So yeah, probably some, pulling some old tricks out of the, you know, the, the bag right there so they can avoid any kind of negativity. And then on the 21st, you have tips and tricks. Like I'm sure you get some videos out there. An All-Star Series Final. So some Twitch streamers, some internet personalities playing some X Defiant, the probably friendly type of tournament. Then the preseason goes live on the 21st and you'll be ready to defy all the X's with X Defiant. Yeah, I make these puns up on the fly, okay? I don't have this written down. Now, we covered this previously on the channel. X Defiant has gone through its situations and issues when it comes to development, right? Like back in the summer of last year of 23, people were really excited about it. it just needed some certain tweaks, especially when it comes to the net code of the game. Well, it looks like a lot of those issues were fixed as I recently played the most recent pre-build beta thing, whatever you want to call it. And I had a lot of fun. It played great. I played on mouse and keyboard. Uh, the skill-based matchmaking is non-existent like they stated, which is kind of cool. But again, like I feel like they're putting so much emphasis on COD players and really alleviating a lot of the issues COD players have with Call of Duty with this game, which for me, as a person who likes Call of Duty, it sounds like a great idea, right? Of course, you're adding that hero shooter element to it, which makes me kind of go like, yeah, maybe I won't like it. I'm not totally sure. But from what I play, like the gunplay is very much like Call of Duty. A lot of the similar guns you would have in a Call of Duty game or in this game as well. Again, like the movement and the gunplay is definitely not like Call of Duty at all, but it has some really fun elements mixed in with it. And after my first play session with it during that recent networking beta test thing, 
I had a lot of fun playing X Defiant, and I'm definitely going to be playing it at launch to see how this game plays out. And releasing with a lot of content, 14 maps at preseason launch, guys. 10 arena, 4 progression maps, 5 factions, 5 modes, and 24 weapons with 44 plus attachments. There's going to be plenty of things to do with X Defiant at the launch of this game. But that's not everything, because once Season 1 finally rolls around, you get 3 weapons, 3 maps, and a 90 tier battle pass, which is odd to have just... 90 tiers instead of your typical 100 stuff but hey you know it's content to play around with and this is a free-to-play game all your, your only thing that's blocking you from playing x defiant is your will to download things now we'll certainly keep my eye on things when it comes to x defiant i'll definitely cover it on the channel here you know i'm not changing to an x defiant channel but I definitely will be jumping in playing, giving my first impressions of it as well. So again, guys, if you want to catch those videos, you know, just tap like, tap like, and subscribe, all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Now, if you guys want to see some predictions of what we're going to see at the Xbox Showcase for 2024, check out this video right here. So thank you all for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.